Hey Johnny, what are you rebelling against? What do you got? <laughs> well, it's not really modern brand though, is it? But this is the Belleni brothers. So, um, you know, twin Benellis, uh, the Benelli brothers, a bit like a circus act. And on that note, I think today we'll be working on a clown car. So let's have a look at it. So I know I'm being a little rude about it. I actually do, um, do like these little cars. They're great fun, aren't they? Um, once you get over the sort of fact that they're almost garden machinery in the way they're built, but you know, there we are. It's, um, yeah, they are, they're, they're great. And they put Italy back on the road. Um, put the economy back together, really, these. These and um, Fiat fridges, which more of them another day. Um, so yeah, yeah, a lot of fun. So I thought we'd have a look at some of the stuff we're doing on this one, just a bit of service work and so on. Um, just servicing the brake system, really, so a fairly easy job for today. Um, it can't all be Maseratis and Dinos and so on, you know, it's a bit like rich food, isn't it? Sometimes you're glad just to have <laughs> egg and chips. <laughs> so, I mean, poor thing, I'd be really rude about it, aren't I? <laughs> egg and chips. Right, let's have a look at the brakes on this little one. So, start getting the wheel off. So that's that bit. We're off of there. So you see the, the wheel bolts straight to the drum here. So you have a locating peg here, which would locate your steel wheel. On these aluminiums, it has a little cut out, and then your wheel bolts go straight into here. Now, one of the problems this has got, and I think it's got noise, which is one of the reasons we're looking at it. And that got worse as it's been driven. So we're gonna have, that's sort of what we're looking for. We will get the grease cap off now. Try not to butcher it. There we are, grease cap off. And then what you see in here, we have a little hub nut, holds the Timkin bearings in. But these don't have split pins. This is the Fiat way of doing things. So they have a peened in bit here. So it's sort of dented in here. So this bit's dented in there. So we've got to undo that peening bit. And what you want to do there is use a suitable chisel. So if you get a little old punch, grind it down with a lead in it, you can get it in there, you know, that'll open it up or so on like that. Depending on what size you want, that's for the bigger ones, this is for the smaller ones. Now they fit this type of nut on the Dinos and everything. So the idea is you get that in there, where your cutout is, and then you can just sort of gently open it up and you open up the peening so that you get it nice and round then you can undo it now these are handed left and right hand thread so you don't know which way it is so before you go too mad try and undo it so what do we do when we undo something we go clockwise sorry undoing is anti-clockwise isn't it and to do things up is clockwise generally so clockwise going to be that way. Well, if you move it that way, it's actually undoing it, you see? It's coming undone. Okay, so if we went counterclockwise, we'd feel it start to do up. Now that's not because it's seized up, that's because you're doing it up, isn't it? But what you'd see, you'd have a bit of slack in here. So if you just put it either way, whichever way you want it to go, You'll feel whether it's going to undo or not. You know, you won't. You won't. You know, it'd be pretty obvious. So yeah. So what we'd normally do is we'd go counterclockwise, which would be that way. But you can see it's going to do up. Whereas going, we, we, we're actually going clockwise to undo it. So it's the opposite thread. Now that's so that it, it doesn't undo itself in, in practice when you do. You know, when you when you're driving, but if the wheel bearing seized up, it wouldn't wouldn't um, uh, you know just just undo and fall off sort of thing. So that's, that's why they have them this way around. It's, it's, a, it's a very strange way of doing things. I'm, I'm never quite um, convinced by it, to be honest, but, but it's the way they do them. And, you know, and it's worked for a long time, so let's just go with it. So anyway, so there you go. Now these are also coloured, these nuts. So this one is silver, the other side's in a gold anodised, or well, it's not anodised, it's a, it's a uh, um, treatment anyway. So th that's another thing you can tell. So, and some of them have different cutouts in them like this to tell you which one's which, but you can see by looking at the thread. But anyway, that's it. So you always remember to use the right one. Now, best to replace these when you, when you put them back on. You can see that's where it's been peened over. So 
can using that chisel it's been all right it hasn't completely split it so you could reuse it but it's best not to best to buy new ones and they're cheap anyway so really if you got one of these cars you'd have a couple of each of these in stock anyway just in your spares package just so that if anything happens on the side of the road it can be dealt with or whatever if the AA come out and you've got one and you need it they can sort it out right so we're taking the bearings out so we don't want that to drop on the floor and fill up with dirt so there you go that comes out that's our Timpkin needle roller and that one's out and then we should be able to get the whole thing off and get, get the rest off so there we are so we were looking for a noise weren't we there we are that'll be it won't it look you see here where well, it's got these bright marks on it it's not there and there but there and there it's hitting these adjusters so that's our problem why that's happening it could be the wheel bearings are a bit worn or it could be that the the stub axles a bit worn uh, don't know we'll have to work that out we can put a shim in here to move them away um, probably one way of doing it we, we could put new bearings in it might be the housing that the bearings are going are worn as well you know we don't know I suspect we'll replace the wheel bearings in this and see what we got so that's that bit uh, the other thing we're looking for is any ridges on here you know how ridged up this is it's a bit ridgy but it's not too bad and it's got a bit of a lip on it so you know might be worth replacing these at the same time uh, we'll have a check on that see what the customer thinks and then we're into our shoes well the shoes are in good condition they look quite good they're fairly new you can see by the condition of them Wilson looks quite new so stuff's been done here and so we've got this witness marks of where that's been clonking on there so generally that doesn't look too bad now what you can happen is these you see these are these are these have got no rivets in them that means they're bonded it means that friction material is stuck to there now what can happen is if, the, if these leak, these wheel cylinders leak, you get brake fluid onto here and it gets in and it'll, it'll take the glue off. And then you get these, these can fall off. They can actually start to come away and fall off. And then you, with, with sometimes with disastrous consequences where they sort of slip round and then lock up on the other one and lock the wheel solid. So you, you, know, you need to be careful. So to look at that, you just sort of see if you've got any movement in the ends of them here and here. You know, see if there's anything where they're trying to come away. Um, but they look good. And they don't look like they've been binding or overheated because that's another thing. When they overheat, they can go all sort of biscuity and you put your nail in it and it'll literally crumble away. So we haven't got any problem with that. It looks quite good. Wheel cylinders, you know, they're fairly new, so they should be fairly good. So visually generally looks all right. Let's have a look underneath the dust seals and see if we've got any sort of brake fluid coming out. Well, they're clean. They're all right. Tiny, tiny bit here. Little dribble there. Look. Oh, yeah, look, look. Dribble of brake fluid there. Probably not enough to worry about, but if you took that out and it all splurged out, you know the, the actual seals inside have gone. But I'm not going to worry too much about that, but you know, because they look new, we might buy new and they might be worse, you know. <laughs> so let's we'll see, we we'll stick with this. Uh, what's this one look like? Doesn't look too bad. Again, yeah, that looks alright. So the next thing now is to see if they're free, if they're seized up, if the pistons are seized up. So you can do that by moving the shoes across by putting levers in either way and move them across like that. Um, but with these adjusters, it does become a bit awkward to do that. They sometimes don't move much. You see this sort of, you're up against the adjuster. So we're not, we're not gonna get much there. So the best thing to do with that then, in, in light of that, is to actually push straight into the piston there on the end. So if you go in here and see where it goes, see if you can push that in. See, it's going in quite nicely, so it's nice and free, that one. That's this piston, then you'll have a corresponding one this side. And if we do the same here, nice and movement, yeah, that's fine. Now, the other test you can do is you can get someone in to sit inside the car, and if you hold the, these two screwdrivers against here, you can get them to push down on the brake gently and just see if, you know, if it moves these out, if they're free, but I know they're free anyway, just by what I've done, so I know that's all right, so I don't need to do, I don't need to muck about like that, but it could be worth doing that, but you, when you, if you're doing that, you need to make sure that you only have one drum off at a time, otherwise, the one you'll leave holding on to, you'll be holding on tight like this, and the other one will be moving out, and then popping the wheel cylinder out. So anyway, that, that's, that's a different thing, we're not doing that now. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, the next thing is how to adjust these. Now, these are on a sort of clutch system. Now, what people used to do, the old trick used to be, you'd, if you've had to fit new brake shoes on these, they weren't adjusted. 
and it was apparently oh, you know go hammering back in reverse and then jump on the brake you know really hard and it will it will pull the 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 the, the, the um the the back drum here into the, this shoe into the drum so as you as you use these you sort of when the drum's going this way and you're going forwards as you apply this this pushes on there which sort of tips the drum into uh, so it tips the shoe into the drum and then you get a sort of mechanical servo action of it sort of pulling itself into it but obviously this one you're pushing away from it so as the drum rotates it's, it's pushing against it so it's just trying to push it closed again so of course by driving forwards it will help uh, when you use that it will pull that forwards and help adjust that one and then if you do it in reverse it will help adjust this one now you can do that that works but what you also can do is if you get, keep these centralised, so when I mean centralised, you want to sort of make sure they sit about right. You know, if you, if you move them around too much here, you, you de-adjust them. But what you can do is just by feeling them. So you can put that on, you can feel how it fits. There's a bit of clearance there, you see, nice bit of clearance. But what you can do then is you can get on these bits here, somewhere like this, and you can lever against it. And then you should be able to see that move against there so that's the play that's the play you get which is when you're you, you know when you're using them because this is moving because this, this is on a peg and there's a hollow in there so that should get the play you get but if you move a bit up you see it's adjusted it see look that's pushed it right out you can see so then I can push that back see how it moves on here you can see it's actually opened up the hole behind it so you can actually adjust them out to roughly where you want them and if it slips back already, then you know these adjusters are gone and you'll never get a good brake pedal. And if you want to do the same this side, you know, you haven't got that pimple there to lever on. So you need to find someone else to lever on. So, you know, what we can do is we can do something like... So if I hold it up on the bottom there... Yeah, you see, I can just about adjust it like that. So I've adjusted them out quite a bit. Make sure they're seating on the back plate. And we should be able to feel how well that fits. Now, you see that sort of adjusted them out a bit, maybe a touch too much even. You see, because I'm struggling to get this on. Oh, now it's going on. Right, so there you go. And you want it centralised. So yeah, we've got it centralised. So yeah, there's still play in there. We could probably get more on that. So let's, um, we must have knocked that one back as we went in. Let's do that. So things like that. Anyway, you get the idea, you get the idea. That is knocking that back when it goes in, so it shows these adjusters aren't that tight on these. So we'll have a think about that. I don't know how that's behaving in, in, in um, practice. Right, let's see. Yes, it's knocking it right back, isn't it? Just pushing the drum on. So I'm wondering if these slip back in, in, in practice, if they've if they're got a bit of give on them. So I'm not really happy with these um, adjusters. I'm not entirely sure they're holding very well. And they're, sort of, they're sort of slipping back quite easily. So I'm not sure these are, these are doing all right. Now bear in mind, we had some other trouble, didn't we? These knocking, these hitting on them drums. So I'm not, I'm not convinced by these. So I think we're gonna pop these shoes off so we can have a better look at them. So if we get this spring off of there to allow us to get the bottom out here, then we should, you see the sort of fold out? Right, let's get these off and see what we've got. So, right, they're off. Um, let's just have a look at the back plates where they're sitting on the back plates. It all looks all right. These are the pegs they sit on that I was saying about. Got a bit of copper grease on there, so it should be all right. And that seems to be sitting, these seem to be in good condition here and here. These seem to be all right, and that's the pegs they sit on. But anyway, so that's what we got. So don't mix the, the um, your, your um, springs up. Try and keep them in order. And you keep your top there and your bottom there. Now actually, they look the same. So they probably are the same on these, but anyway, normally they're different on a lot of cars. So they keep that like that. So yeah, so we see here, this is, this is the bit 
where this clutch system works on here. So that, that allows that a bit of play on there. So let's um, try and tip these in and see what we've got. So you can see, see that movement there? That's just the play, which is the difference between the size of that peg and the size of that hole. So that, sh that should sort of give, you know, when you apply your brakes, that's, you know, allows it to come out and then adjust back up. See, so you're not affecting the adjusters there, that's just the movement in them. But this is the, this is the clutch adjuster. So you have this spring here, and it just relies on the tension of these, you know, that spring working on there. And that, that's, you know, allows that to be moved out. And as I say, these seem to be slipping back a bit. Now I'm not entirely convinced they're all right. Now there's a bit of something around here, it's a bit shiny around there, I don't know what that is. If that's a bit of, you know, someone's tried to lube them or something. So, yeah, don't know, don't know. They feel tough enough now. There, I can move it like that. Hmm. I'm not convinced these are that good. It takes a bit of effort to move it that way. Um, oh, but yeah, I can move them reasonably easily back. I don't know, I have a think about these. Not convinced by these at the minute. No, I don't like the fact these have been hitting. I, as I say, we've either got the drums sitting too far further back because we've either got wear here or, or wear in the in, inside, you know, where the bearings sit. Something ain't quite right to allow that to sit that far back. You can see where these are hitting. So yeah, so that's where it's hitting on that. Don't know, I think we've got to do a little bit of, um, a little bit more investigation on this one, haven't we? But these aren't old, look, you can see they're not old. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. And of course the fear is if we put new on, it will take a while for them to bed in, but maybe we'll put new drums on a lot and be done with it. Um, you see, that takes a lot more effort to move that one. See, just putting that on that pole. It's a lot more, takes a lot more to move this one. See, I'm just moving this adjuster on here to see how tough it is. Yeah, that one's working better. I reckon that one's slipping back. And that will give you a long pedal travel. Yeah. And we've got single circuit you know, master on these, so we, we, you know, we don't really want to be mucking around, pumping it out when we don't need to. I think this needs a bit, I reckon we'll replace them, see what a new set's like. I reckon we'll put new drums on it as well. I think, I think that they've got, you know, a bit of, bit of ridge in here. These are a bit picked up. I think new drums, wheel bearings, new shoes. Wilson's, I think, are going to be all right. I think we'll leave them alone for now. Um, but yeah, we can now see in here how the pistons move. Now we've got those off, we can see better. So let's have a, have a look, see? And they shuttle in and out. Then you can push them both in. So yeah, we've got plenty of room in them. So that's all right. <laughs> it's a bat phone. <laughs> Suspect unwanted. Well, that's how you fit 500 brakes work. Just like garden washing. Simple stuff, really. But there we are. Anyway, that'll do for today, I think. I've got to make a shim up, I think, to pull that away, or we've got to get wheel bearings for it, or drums. Well, you know, we've got more work to do on this, so this is just a little cursory inspection, just to sort of show you roughly what goes on. Um, and we'll see. That'll do.